Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan and I'm a self-taught pharma, physicist and electrical engineer who conducts open source research in the fields of unified physics, radiant power systems and the energy systems of soil, plants uh, and the human body. All of my research is open source and no new ideas that come up in my videos can be patented. In this video, we're going to be looking at the effects of these two different rodent coil configurations uh, on a neodymium sphere magnet. Uh, and these ones just really work well for these experiments. So with this coil, we've just got still two different channels um, and they're both running in a clockwise winding configuration. Just to make it even with this coil, uh, which has also two channels, um, but one is in a counterclockwise configuration and one's in a clockwise configuration. And this is based on Jamie Buterf's interference coil design. And, and I thought that this is a really interesting experiment that I hadn't really seen done side by side because looking at uh, Master Evo's work showing his coil capacitors, um, his bifila pancake coils at work, he shows that you know, when he faces them in one direction, so like op opposing windings, um, they'll oppose each other, like, like an opposing magnet, so kind of two north sides of a magnet together, and then when he flips it, uh, they attract to each other, so they act more like a north and a south side attracting together. So I thought, well, this is kind of the same, except the, the center point, this, you know, this point where our dielectric portal is going to be, um, you know, if looking at the field geometry, that's going to be on the same plane, this plane of inertia. And you can measure this with an oscilloscope. You can just get like a bit of metal on, a, on an oscilloscope, like something ferromagnetic or even something not ferromagnetic um, and just put it, you know, closer. And the closer you get to this plane, the higher amplitude signal you're going to get, um, unless you actually touch the coil in, in some way, even through the insulated wire. So yeah, we'll put I'm going to use uh, 7.83 hertz on both channels and one channel um, just to see the effect on this sphere magnet. The reason why I'm using 7.83, you know, it's beautiful Schumann resonance, right? Um, but also it's a really low frequency and it causes quite a dramatic effect in this magnet. Um, it kind of jumps around and, you know, this is quite a small amp compared to what some of the rodent coil guys are using. They're using those like 650, 850 watt car amps. So this is just 120 watt, two channel, um, reasonably cheap amp. I've also got my Gauss meter set up here, um, which is just showing the, sorry, it says Gauss meter, but it's actually reading in micro Tesla. So we're just currently at a radiant reading of 84 micro Tesla, which isn't I don't think that's that great, really, just as far as radiant EMF emissions are going, but I have been playing around with these coils, so it's not too shocking. So anyway, we'll put the uh, 7.83 frequency in on just one channel, so one of these clockwise windings, and we'll see what the micro Tesla reading is and what the effect on the magnet is. All right, oh, here we go, magnet is moving so that's down low we'll turn that up quite a bit oh you can see that the magnet is kind of jumping around the place if we hold it up here it's just quivering and then if we bring it down closer to that plane of inertia it really starts to go whoa, uh, quite wild so I'll hold it kind of like this you can kind of see yeah, that it's literally wiggling around quite violently. So, and if you put it down here, yeah, it's like a weird squirming. It's weird to see something solid doing this. Like I can't describe how bizarre it feels. Um, and if we bring it over to our Gauss meter. Um, okay, we're getting about 300 micro Tesla. It's going way up now. Kind of see if I can just expose the point in the magnet that it likes to get a good reading. Yeah, it's getting like 500, 600. This probably isn't that healthy to just like do this, but I'm just doing it to show you and I'll go ground myself afterwards. You know, this is for AC frequencies, of course. People will say around high voltage, you know, make sure 
you're not grounded, but um, it's good to be grounded actually when you're working with AC frequencies to avoid unexpected results. So we'll put the second channel on now. So this is just a sine wave, 7.83. You can see it immediately gets gentler. So I'll put it back on for a second, just on one channel. Oop, violent. And then we get this cancellation effect on the magnetic field. So if I turn on the second channel of the uh, clockwise winding now, Oop, immediately it's just now this kind of much more gently vibrating. It's still a very strong force, like you can see it really, you know, it, it'll move your hand around. Um, we can put it in the hand and it will wobble around like this. My wife's got it to kind of spin around on her hand before really fast. Um, so one channel, violent, both channels, drops a bit. As far as the Tesla reading, if you take the magnet away, see the, uh, the micro Tesla reading will just go back down to kind of what it was ambulantly before, which is quite interesting. But if you put something that conducts it, um, or you put the magnet nearby, and then of course, if we turn off both frequencies, just to show the reading of the magnet, Oh well, it's uh, actually still doing much the same thing, so maybe it's just affected by the field of the magnet, the field here, but it's certainly we're getting a different effect here. So now what I'm going to do is just take this apart and wire up our interference coil design, so a clockwise winding and a counterclockwise winding, and we're just going to kind of anecdotally compare what that feels like and what the magnet's doing um, as compared to with this two clockwise windings coil. All right, I've got my interference coil set up and my sphere magnet here again. Uh, so we will see if there's a difference by having one clockwise winding, one counterclockwise winding in the coil as opposed to the other. So here's one channel. Sorry, there's a little wiggling wire here on my rodent coil. It's become a little loose, but. Otherwise, I mean, it's pretty strong, but I'm not sure it's any stronger. I've just moved my gauss meter away because it's not really telling me much. See, this seems to be much the same, like maybe it's a little... No, look, I, th I really think it's the same. Oh, we don't have our amp up full. Let's turn that up. All right. It's reasonably powerful. There's quite a bit of heat coming from this coil actually, which I didn't feel that there was that much heat coming from the other. It is vibrating a little more. I think we can see that's definitely going pretty wild, but look, they don't seem dramatically different. Maybe more heat and from what I've heard, maybe more ozone as well um, is being produced by this coil. Usually I think they come together and I can almost feel like a, mm -hmm. an energy vortex here. Quite impressive. So let me just turn the second channel on. Oop. And yeah, same thing. It... Look, I think I think there's probably a little more powerful in this coil actually with the opposing windings. It's very strange. And you can see, you know, if we move it to the outside, I didn't show you this before, but if you move it to the outside, not a lot. You know, it's quivering. Move it above into this hyperboloid vortex region and bringing it down into the vortex and it goes wild. So anyway, that's just a bit of a phenomenon I thought I'd show you and compare these two coils because I needed to do it anyway to decide on how we're going to do our nested coil. And I'm left a little unsure actually. Um, one thing I do know is that next time I'm going to be really grounding myself when I play around with this stuff because you can feel it. Um, you know, it's um, you feel quite head heavy and a little kind of like, ooh, shaky um so don't play around with ac currents if you don't know what you're doing um which sounds like a bit of hypocrisy but i will use my electrostatic bracelet um, to keep grounded this is you know connected to an earth ground um in the future and i recommend that you probably do the same if you'd like to try some of these experiments at home yourself we're going to be making kit sets for a coil similar to, the, to the, this one um, in a previous video i said as well that these aren't the correct geometry and the, the correct ratios we believe so uh, my wife's working on a different design that we using uh, Roden and Tom Barnett's mathematics 
and uh, working on Andrew Spard's design uh, that we got all online and trying to make a correct geometry coil. Uh, so we'll see some more effects from that. But we'll also have that as a kit set available if you want to try some of these experiments with due caution uh, yourself at home. So thanks for watching and that's all for today.